For this demo, I'm going to be showing you how to use loop tools for a decoration. I just have a close to leather hard slab here, and I'm going to try using this small loop tool just to make some thicker lines. It's better than using a needle tool, you get more definition. I'm going to start with some short lines, and I'll do some longer ones. Get kind of these ribbons that come off. And if you do it over and over again, you can really create some sense of movement as well as possibly like a tree bark or waves or anything of that nature. Um, I want to create some crevices, so I'm just using that same tool. I'm just carving just a little bit deeper in a couple of spots just to really emphasize a sense of depth within my form. You do get some of these little chunks that'll come up, and that's okay. You just got to smooth them out with your finger or like a little rubber shaper tool that I have at my desk, so you could ask for that. Just going to do a little bit more at the bottom. And I could do this more, it could be knots in the trees, it could be lower waves versus higher waves, I could add little coils in some areas even on top to really emphasize kind of that difference in height depending on what you're trying to recreate or even abstract. Maybe it's hair, who knows what it is. All right, but you can really repeat these short little lines to create some really cool textures. This could just be a basic texture, it could be a bark, it could just be a decoration. It doesn't really matter, but it has a really cool look. Next tool I'm gonna to use is just a circle loop tool. I'm gonna to try using this a few different ways little bit similar to that smaller loop tool. Trying different directions, different angles for myself. So a little bit longer lines, wider mark. And with these loop tools, um, this clay is a little bit soft. Um, not super soft, it's not fresh out of the bucket or the box, but it is a little stiffer, but not so stiff. Um, so you do see a little bit of that pull from the clay that's a little rough. Um, you could do it when it's a little bit harder, and you can get a little bit more defined look, but you have a better chance of breaking it versus it being more flexible. So I'm just using a small triangle. You could use a larger one too, but the small one works great. But I don't have a whole lot of cleanup I need to do with this line, and it gives it a nice tapered look as well. So that could be another way to get some cool wavy lines. Just using my tool is kind of an impression. You don't always have to use it to carve away stuff just because it's a loop tool. Okay, maybe a little bit more squared off cut away to really show a difference in space and depth. But not cutting all the way through. Be careful if you do a lot of cutting like that that's really deep. Make sure that your walls are appropriately thick. If they're too thin, you're just going to end up cutting right through and you could really jeopardize the strength of your piece, especially if you do a lot of it. So again, just using that corner, repeating it. That could be just a fun texture on the outside. It could be, you know, maybe like short hair on a dog or whatever you're trying to recreate. All right, now one of my favorite tools is the double-sided loop tool, whether it's for hand building, decorating, wheel throwing, whatever you can do, because you have lots of different options. So again, I can use the corner, so just like with that triangle tool. Depending how deep you go, you get a little bit wider line. If you barely touch it, it's not going to make a real deep line, whereas that one was a lot wider because I pushed a little bit harder. I'm going to use the rounded side, so I can carve away if I want to make one big wide line. But my favorite thing to do with this is to kind of do this overlapping texture that can have a really nice look for the outside. So very similar to what I've done with the other tools, but I like this look the best. And I can do this when it's like a real late leather hard too, and I don't have to clean up hardly anything at all. It's just very defined. Right here it's still a little on the soft side. So all of these tools are much better than using a needle tool. Needle tools are, you do all this work drawing out designs, they're good for sketching, but you won't see it later in the end. Your design will get lost with the glaze.
All right, so just going to show you how the shadows reflect with it and the light plays on those textures. Kind of takes away some of the flatness that pieces can get sometimes. All right, there's lots of new ideas for you. Play along and happy decorating.